So maybe you've decided that the old receptacles and switches in your home are worn out or outdated and you'd like to replace them. You pull the first receptacle out of the wall only to find that the wires are too short and it's going to be very difficult to replace the device. Well, you're in luck because today I'm gonna to show you three methods to extend those short wires without having to run new cable. Hey guys, John here with Backyard Maine. I've been an electrician for 40 years and I know how frustrating it can be to deal with short wires. Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to fix them. But as always, before we start, we need to turn off the power and then we need to test to be sure that the circuit is de-energized and safe to work on. Now we can remove the receptacle and figure out what option is going to be best for extending the wires. The first and most obvious method is to try to pull some slack into the box. It's not common, but it is possible that a service loop was left when the wiring was installed. Or if not, maybe there's a few inches of slack in the wall that we can pull into the box. If this is the case, we just pull the additional cable into the box and then we'll strip off the extra sheath. And this will give us all the slack we need to make up our device safely and bring the box back up to code. Speaking of code, the National Electric Code has wire length requirements for outlet, switch, and junction boxes. It states that at least a quarter of an inch of sheath must penetrate the box opening or cable clamp. From the sheath, we need at least six inches of free conductor and it must extend at least three inches outside the box. I like to leave about six inches of wire outside the box. Now that's more than the three inches that's required, but it gives you a little extra slack to easily make up your device. In most cases, method one of pulling extra cable into the box is not going to work, which brings us to our other two choices. Now, method two is going to work fine, but it's a little more difficult to accomplish and get a reliable result. Now, method three is super easy to accomplish with minimal effort, and it's the one I recommend to most DIYers, so stay tuned for that. Method number two would be to use wire nuts. Now, these can be a little difficult to use when the wires are short, but it certainly can be done. We'll cut six inch tails from our cable and then remove the wire from the sheath. I like to pre-twist the wires whenever possible when using wire nuts. The manufacturers say it's optional, but I think it's a best practice. Now we'll go ahead and connect all our wire nuts. And when we're done, we'll have plenty of wire to safely make up our receptacle. There is another option that you may have seen in videos, which is to use a butt splice. For this, we'd strip about 5 16 of an inch of insulation off our wire and use a crimping tool to connect the wire with the butt splice. But there's a problem. Butt splices are only approved for stranded wire. They don't bite down well on solid wire and the wire will easily pull right out. So be sure to avoid using butt splices on solid wire. It's a common mistake and you will not get a reliable result. Before we move on to method three, I need my morning energy boost from AG1, the sponsor of today's video. I start my day off with a simple 60 second routine that supplies the nutrients that I need for optimized performance. AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports the whole body. Many vitamins and minerals are hard for the body to process. AG1 carefully sources our ingredients for absorption, potency and nutrient density so you can get the most out of the nutrients you consume. Instead of addressing just one area of the body, foundational nutrition supplements raise our baseline health. AG1 supports the brain, the gut, and the immune system. I've been drinking AG1 as part of my morning routine for a while now and there are three things that I really love about it. First, it supports immune defense, which is very important, especially during the winter months. Second, it helps me stay focused and have plenty of energy throughout the day. And third, I feel like it improves my mood and my ability to manage stress. One scoop or travel pack of AG1, eight ounces of water, give it a shake, and it's ready to drink. Go to drinkag1.com slash backyardmain or scan the QR code to get a one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five AG1 travel packs with your first subscription. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. 
This third method is going to be the easiest way for you to get a reliable result every time, especially if you're a DIYer and you don't do this work every day. In this case, we're going to use lever connectors, often referred to as lever nuts. You can use the Wago 221, or Ideal makes a similar lever connection as well. There are also similar looking stab-in connectors available, but I do not recommend them for receptacle circuits. The lever connectors apply mechanical force and are much more reliable, in my opinion. If we have two or more sets of wires in the box, we'll need to use one of these multi-wire options. With two sets of wires, we're going to need one with three connections. Two for our wires in the box and one for our pigtails to our receptacle. We'll connect our tails first. We'll strip about a half of an inch of insulation off our wires, insert them into the connector, and snap the lever closed. With the Wago 221, you can see that the wire is inserted all the way to the end of the connector and that there's no insulation showing. We'll also make 180 degree bends on our tails to make them easy to connect to the short wires inside our box. As you can see, I already stripped about a half inch of insulation off of our short wires, so now we'll connect our pigtails to the wires in the box. Same thing here. We just insert our wires and snap the levers closed. We'll hook up our other two conductors as well. These are very easy to use. I'll show you a few different options you have when using lever connectors and which one you choose will depend on how many wires you have in the box. We can also use this same connector with just one set of wires in the box by leaving one port open or we can use a two port connector as well. But Wago also makes a butt style connector. It's the same connection method, but like a butt splice, the wires are extended in a straight line. These are also a great option for extending wires. Now that we have our wires extended and we have our outlet boxes back up to the required standard, we can install our new device and move on to the next one. If you want to learn more about electrical connections, you're going to want to watch this video next where I'll show you the best way to wire receptacles for a reliable installation that'll last for decades. Hey, all the tools and equipment that I used in the video are linked down in the description. I'm John from Backyard, Maine. I'll see you on the next one.